How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Fine, Fine. Thank you. Uh, so I saw your movie mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. as you, yes. I think. Uh, I really loved it. Great. I know. I don't know what you hear, the, what you heard on the festival. Uh, I like the the fact that it's really not just small small space with small people, and um, and I like the the theme of um, of intensity between the the characters because they are all together all the time and feelings are getting stronger. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know if you know you. You, you've been inspired like in theatre, uh, stuff like people always together to, to have more, more feelings uh, quicker, quicker. I think it's from living in New York, to be honest. <laughs> You're in cramped spaces, and yeah. I think. And also, um, and also, I mean, I did study theatre, but I think it comes more from simply living in cramped spaces in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, be, I've been there just one week, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's life there, and you have to deal with people constantly, and then you go outside and you deal with people, you're like, constantly. Everything feels claustrophobic there, even though there are okay. large buildings. Cover. I mean, it's just like, I mean, maybe that makes it more claustrophobic. But you like it. I love it, yeah. <laughs> I've been there for 13 years, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to know how did you meet uh, both of you, and uh, what did you like in that project? We met through a mutual friend, um, an actress, Jocelyn. Uh, I had seen a film of Nathan's that he made before this one called Soft in the Head, which I really loved. And I, I actually, it was one of my favorite films of the year. I, I, I program a big festival in America, the Slam Dance Film Festival. I watch 650 films a year. Yeah. So Nathan's film was one that really stood out for me and I knew that I, I wanted to work with him. And Jocelyn introduced us and he came to LA and I met with Nathan and Chloe, his co-writer and one of our producers. And we really hit it off. And I, I basically told Nathan that I will help him with his film, the, the other one that he did, no matter how I can, talk to all of my friends at festivals and try and get it into festivals, and that I would love to work with him on his next one. And that's sort of how it happened. Yeah. How do you sell uh, this movie? Uh, are you selling that uh, as a love story? Love story, a three people love story, or a different kind of way? Because it's a festival movie, so I imagine it's not easy to, to sell uh, this movie outside of a uh, this country, how how did you do? That's a that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we it's always the question. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think there's like there's a sense of camp and uh, humor to it all. That's this fact that it's like a love story. It's an impossible love story. It's a del delusional love. Um, but this idea of selling the movie, I think there are a lot of fascinating um, actors involved, and it's about making people see the, these characters for. Uh, seeing the importance of these characters, you know? I don't really know how the, the indie world works, but we have to try and get it there. <laughs> and I, I, mean, I think that, you know, with, with Nathan's style of filmmaking, he creates really rich characters that feel very authentic. And, um, you know, his style is very improvisational, which often has a very negative connotation. People assume that when you improvise with actors, you're not preparing mm. as, a, as a filmmaker, that you're not taking the time to really think things through, to write a, a really elaborate script. But that's not actually true, and especially not in Nathan's case, because he spends weeks and sometimes months developing the characters before production even begins with his actors. And so by the time they get onto set, they are those characters. And you, you often don't find that in, in heavily scripted movies where people are just reading words off of the page. So I think that that gives them, it gives a naturalism to the performances and to the characters where they feel even more humanistic than what you often see in scripted movies. And, you know, one of the appeals of the movie is that it feels like a documentary at times, like you're living in this world and you don't see a lot of movies like that. You know, you may see movies that are very glitzy and polished and big in scope, and those are great, but, but they don't have that level of intimacy that a movie like this has. And I think that that's really one of the biggest selling points. In addition to the raw talent, with this very young, extremely talented cast of, of up-and-coming actors, many of which we think are going to go on to great success, yeah. so hopefully here. from this movie and, and beyond. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you talked about the cast. I would like to know uh, how did you choose them, because uh, for the, most of them, it's their first movie. Um, so, basically, uh, David, who plays Robbie, yes. He, I, he's, I've known him since yeah. uh, we were best friends, 
and I knew I wanted to put him in a movie, and then I knew I wanted my mother in there. And then basically we reached out to other filmmakers for the rest of the cast, other directors for the pregnant teenagers, and for for um, Chase, the character of Chase. We found we found him through other directors who um, directed, you know, yeah. movies about adolescents. Yeah, it was difficult to to work with them. Uh, the world. No, I mean it was most difficult to work with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so. But. Um, no, everyone, everyone else is very, very easy to work with. They're they're very hungry young actors, and they 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 take it much more seriously than a lot of other actors that may be coming with a certain level of ego, you know. And um, they they really became those characters, which is which is great when you watch the movie. You feel yeah. like you're living in that space with them. Yeah, each character seems really uh, natural. The the red hair, she's marvelous. Uh, yeah, she's uh, she seems completely. Uh, Natural in the forest, uh, yeah, yeah, walking, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it seems that she, she has been there uh, for months. And I wanted to know how long did the shooting uh, went? Uh, because sure. it was like it was uh, around 15 days. Wow, that's more, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, so <laughs> she passed, yeah. yeah, that's cool because we, f we feel we feel an atmosphere uh, like a family, something mm -hmm. in 15 days, and yeah, that's really short. And that comes with the preparation. So going back to this idea of Nathan spending weeks at a time with his actors before the production begins to really talk through the characters and give them backstories so that when they show up on set, mm -hmm. they are those people. And when you do that, you're essentially rehearsing for so long that you know exactly what the scenes are going to be. In addition to the fact that you know, you know, it was shot with two cameras for most mm -hmm. of the film, so that helped give it more of a documentary feel with a lot of coverage, whereas another film, if it was single camera, it would take longer to do all the different setups, you know. You have a little uh, role in the movie? Yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to know if, if uh, in the future you could be a uh, so, uh, director and actor with a bigger role as an I, I, actor. I've done it before in a, in, in a movie I made called Exit Elena. Yeah. One of the, yeah one of the main supporting characters. So I really enjoyed doing it too because it was uh, heavily improvised and I could direct from within a scene. So I liked it a lot. I'll do it again, but not, yeah, not for the next few movies, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> and um, do you have uh, any more plans for your movie? Because now it's in Dovi. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, do you think you will do other festivals or mm -hmm. Maybe a release in France. I don't know if uh, it's something maybe going on. We're hoping for a release in France. We're looking. <laughs> um, we're going to be playing a lot of festivals in the months yeah. to come around Europe, in the U.S., and South America. And <laughs> yeah, we're right now. That's our our goal is to find distribution. And it's it's an honor to be at a festival like Deauville. You know, we're we're playing with some of the best American independent films of the year, and many of them are. 10 to 50 times the budget of our film, so it's humbling to be in this in this company of great films. And um, you know, when we look at the festivals that that are uh, receiving us well, we're we're very uh, surprised and, and happy to see that we're we're playing at really prestigious festivals, where people are obviously looking past the fact that it's a very small film, and they're looking into the fact that it's very well made, that the characters are very fresh and that Nathan has a very unique voice, and that's really the ultimate point of festivals, is to discover new voices. And for me, as a festival programmer, that's what I look for. I don't look at what's going to bring the most attention for press, necessarily, and stars. I want to find the greatest filmmakers, because I know that those are going to stand the test of time with great films that inspire other young filmmakers to go and make new movies of their own. Oh, so... Have you, did you have some difficulties uh, to make this movie, and uh, have you met some uh, some problems on the shooting? I mean, I, th I think shoots are always difficult because you're dealing with a lot of people. But this one went relatively smoothly. I mean, I think we we shot it in my that's my parents' house, yeah. and my mother was also also acting in it, so it was very difficult for her and she wasn't always um, rational about everything, and so she and I would fight a lot. Um, but, I mean, for the most part it went very well, and we all knew we were living together, we bonded. Yeah. <laughs> it was, 
I mean, you know, whenever you have a lot of people in a small space, there are going to be altercations when you put those fires out. And do you want to to do a, a next movie with your mother again? It's time. Yeah, I want to write. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually writing a script with her. Okay. I don't want to shoot in the near future. So. That's cool. Yeah, uh, she's gonna narrate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I read that you shot the movie in a HD cam, and not in DCP. It was it was shown on HD cam. Yeah. 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 Uh, Wait, that choice. Um, we haven't made a DCP yet. We're going to. Yeah, but. because uh, when I saw the movie, uh, we can see the picture is not the same as usual. Uh, I felt like uh, I'm a part of the f the movie. In fact, the yeah. I was yeah. uh, like a, a character. Who I mean, we also uh, we shot and we. When we had low lighting situations or low light situations, we wouldn't we wouldn't like we would shoot and there would be uh, we would have like the gain on we would we wanted we didn't we didn't go for something glossy we yeah. wanted something that was you know not pristine and then we ended up adding grain in post production so I mean even if we're, if we're on a DCP it would look the same. Mm. I want I wanted to know um, it's a, a detail of the movie. At the be uh, because the telephone is a, is a symbol during the movie. At the beginning, the, the red hair has one, but we don't know who is she calling, mm -hmm. and, the, and Robbie too. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, is it like the link between the, the two people, or is that more? Uh, I, 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 found, yeah, I, I found that it was uh, like a big symbol, but I didn't get really like why. Uh, I think relationships take place over phones now. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, it's really a statement about communication not happening through phones, and yeah. that's the irony of it. You know, everyone has a phone, but we don't know how to communicate. We we know less about communication now that we have all the technology to constantly put us in touch with each other. And that was a common a common point between these two these two characters because they had problem communication, and that's what they what were the like closer maybe. Yeah, that's what the connecting yeah. point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What Relationships was? end over text messages now, so... Yeah, yeah. Snapchat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Snapchat, that would be a great way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was your inspiration for this movie? Do you have uh, Filmmaker-wise, or, uh, or just like what, what uh, costume? Oh, yes, filmmaker, and uh, for the movie. And for the story? Um, so yeah, for my, the story. My mother was in a home for unwed mothers when she was a teenager. Okay. And um, a Chloe has a fascination with pregnant teenagers and so we decided what if my mother ran her own home for unwed mothers and then my friend David I wanted to put him in a movie and so what if he entered this situation and it seemed like a lurid situation it's very like there's something almost like high drama about this you know this male entering this all female <laughs> place so I thought that, that would be a fun thing to play with make it like make a subtle movie with, with this like high drama concept Did you know um, there is a French movie about a teenage, uh, yeah, teenage like a teenage, yeah, seventeen I've never girls? Yeah, I've never seen it, but I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I think it will it will be uh, it will be good for for your core. I would love to yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good because they decide they, they decide all together to to get pregnant. Yes, it's, yeah, uh, it's like a okay. <laughs> And what it's based on a town in Kentucky, right? I, I think, don't know. I think it is. Yeah, it's but like they, a town, yeah, it's like a great a movie, school. and yeah. Uh, yeah, it worked it worked really well on mm -hmm. festival too. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. That's a very good movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, your movie... Uh, um, your movie, uh, the duration is uh, one hour and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, why uh, did you choose that duration? It was... Uh, I think, I, I mean, all of the movies I've made thus far are around that length. I just, there's something about telling a story within that amount of time that appeals to me. And um, I feel like movies are getting shorter. Yeah. And I like that fact. I like, okay. yeah, I like making them more compact and trying to make something emotional within that given time frame. Mm -hmm. I know there's something about it that it works for me. In America, uh, big Hollywood movies are getting longer. Oh, they're yeah. The yeah. Where they're three hours, <laughs> two and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, the Michael Bay's. Yeah. 
but um, but independent films at festivals are getting shorter. So it used yeah. to be um, 90 minutes was about the average for a pretty mm -hmm. concise movie. Now, I, because I watch hundreds yeah. of movies a year, I say 75 minutes is the new 90 minutes. So and and I actually don't mind that because I think that for a lot of people were. We're so distracted by so many things. We, you know, sometimes we even watch movies or watch TV while we have our phone open or our computer open. We're on social media, so knowing that you're you have all these other things that are distracting, it's nice to be able to tell a very concise story efficiently, and still, you know, captivate captivate audiences and get your your story across without having to waste time. And that's what independent film is doing, which is the opposite of you know the studio world. So um, 75 minutes, it's, if it's a good story, mm -hmm. I think goes a long way versus, you know, 90 minutes if it feels like it's 30 minutes too long. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because in the festival, uh, I think you saw that the, the movies uh, which are programmed usually are quite short, like yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not, uh, I think there is one movie for, of two hours, but it's really rare because it allow us to see a lot of movies. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to know if, uh, like, did you watch some some of the other movies uh, this week? Uh, not yet. Not yet? I just got in yesterday. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. I've seen some of them already from other festivals, mm -hmm. you know, um, but uh, we're hoping to see more throughout the week. Yeah. Is there uh, one which, uh, like, made you uh, a good impression? I love War Story. I love War Story, Mark Jackson's film. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. it uh, like uh, two hours ago. So I, I made uh, a film with Mark, his previous film, uh, Without, that played here at Deauville three years ago. Okay. And fun. so we, we made that movie together, and um, I'm a big fan of his. And you know, War Story was a movie that I was very close to my heart, and uh, I continue to support it and talk about it with, with friends and journalists and everyone. So. Yeah. He's leaving tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be back later in the week, but uh, yeah. yeah. You talked about the character of Froby, mm -hmm. uh, played by your friend. Uh, when you you wrote the the script, did you think immediately uh, about yeah. him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew I wanted to make a movie with him, and then wrote yeah. that character. And so, so he, he came before. He came before the character. <laughs> Do you will uh, work again with him? Um, I don't. He doesn't want to act. I don't think. I mean. Yeah. I want to make a movie with him. I want to co-direct something at some point. But he's a machinist. He works in the <laughs> island. Um, he works with machines, machinery. Yeah. He's a good one. He's yeah. a good actor. He's a good, yes. yeah. yeah. He reminds me of some actors, some actors so I, I thought it was an actor. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that works. Mm -hmm. That works. And um, do you have, like, uh, maybe for your next project, uh, some indie uh, actors, some, you know, upcoming people you, you would like to work with? I mean, I just shot another movie and some of the same people, okay. um, like same? Tally and Hannah are in it, um, and Keith Poulsen, who's in, somebody up there likes me and Listen Up Philip, um, and Eleanor Hendricks, who's in uh, the Softy Brothers movie, The Pleasure of Being Robbed, she's in it. So okay. we got some good people. And what's the title of your movie next week? A Stinking Heaven. Stinking Heaven. Yeah, we just, uh, we wrapped a few weeks ago, we have a rough cut now. Oh. So in the week next week. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you, you could be a, a bigger movie uh, with a, yeah, a I big make, yeah, yeah, I want to make a big movie. I just uh, I want to make I want to continue to work as much as I can. So yeah. as those things come into place, I'll make smaller movies. Mm -hmm. it takes time for the you know it takes yeah. time to put those together. So a lot of filmmakers talk. Nathan does, hmm. so it's nice to see you know that he's constantly working on something new. It's very inspiring, and, and you know not every filmmaker can achieve that, but um, but it gives it gives inspiration for other filmmakers to see that it's it's not impossible to go and make a movie, the movie that you want to make, if you're willing to make sacrifices, not make it for as much money as you think you need, not make it with the level of recognizable cast that you think you need, you can make the movie that that really puts your voice out there and reaches audiences somehow. Um, a few months ago, uh, we had another festival uh, in France for independent, independent uh, US film. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Champs-Élysées Film Festival, yeah. so yeah. it's Paris. Mm -hmm. And we saw uh, great movies and uh, the directors, would, like, they were like to putting everything for their movie and yeah. it's, they were really great. And uh, mm -hmm. I encourage you to go in that festival too. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Like, did you meet really through Tobia? Uh, See you next Tuesday? 
Yeah. I love yeah. him. Oh, uh, and the director is so funny. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's in yeah. my last, he's in the movie I just made. Oh, cool. He was also a PA. Oh, cool. An owner to Kelp. You know, yeah, yeah, Summer yeah. of Blood. He yeah, did the poster were. for one of my movies, so yeah, I crazy. love all those movies. He's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a guy. picture with him. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, were, they were really good movie. I don't know if you saw uh, Fort Bliss. From, um, What's it called? Fort Bliss. Oh. Uh, uh, it's with um, Michelle Monaghan. No. Oh, no, no. That's really good. It's okay. about... Um, he won, he won the festival, the, the oh. prize. And it's about uh, a woman uh, in the military. Mm-hmm. And uh, she comes home... Two, two years after Afghanistan and uh, her son doesn't recognize her mm-hmm. and it's about uh, the relationship between you know the military and the family and the, the child and mother and like should a, should a mother go during two years and leave uh, her child behind it's Crazy. really good cool. yeah okay. and yeah, it's an independent her. movie and uh, yeah she was she was great and uh, she's like yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. lots of good movies I think the villa is closing. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Can you take a picture? Uh, sure.